source data set. So basically, there are some redundant variables which you are actually removing, and this is one particular case. How do you know which variables are relevant, which are not? Uh, so Navneet, uh, the question that you are asking me is, uh, how do you know which variables are relevant? So relevant for model development. So we'll come to that. That's a different story. So we'll come to it later down, not right now, right? So for logistic regression models, there are there is a concept of information value and weight of evidence, which we use to form an idea about how or which are the most informative variables. Based on that, they are removed. There are some business requirements. There are some regulatory requirements. So a lot of things going to decide on the variable waterfall. So we would discuss that later down, not right now. Right. Okay. So before development of the model. So that's part that's one part. So in this case, when you are removing variables related to market risk or operational risk, you end up with a lower number of variables. Now coming to the number of observations. So similarly for model development, similarly for developing a probability of default model. model accounts in the books of the bank books of the bank which are operating are to be considered hence accounts which are closed, deceased, already defaulted, etc. It defaulted uh, closed accounts, deceased accounts, fraud and bankrupt accounts. Accounts are removed from the data. Right. So basically what I'm talking about is so accounts which are closed, deceased, already defaulted, etc. So basically there are there is a variable called a deceased flag. There is a variable called a fraud and bankruptcy flag. So there is a uh, account called uh, closed account flag. So given this for, for accounts where these flags are one, such accounts are not required. Now if I'm removing accounts, what I'm doing is I'm actually removing the total number of observations in the data set, right? So the final data set that I go out to create will have Okay, so uh, basically these observations are less of, I mean, so these observations, what we are doing is we are removing these observations from the data set, right? Hence, the accounts which are closed, deceased, already defaulted, needs to be removed from the data for creating the appropriate modeling data. Hence, the source data that we create would have lower number of observations compared to the, uh, compared to the, like the final, the destination data set that we create would have much lower number of observations compared to your uh, original data set, right? Right. So in this case, so hence when these accounts are removed from the data, therefore the appropriate, therefore uh, the destination data set would have a lower number of data sets, would have lower number of observations compared to the source. 
data set. So this reduction has come about as a result of model exclusions which in turn are required for which turn are required for model for creating appropriate modeling data set. Right? Okay, fine. So over here, so this is an example that we have used to demonstrate that why would our data set or like when we have, why would we require at all to create a subset of a data set and why is it that a data set might have a lower number of variables and lower number of observations. So over here, what we would do is we would use a case study to identify this kind of our data extraction process. Right. So
Now, now what I am trying to do over here is I am just trying to just copy this data set from App Score One to the Stat Library, and there is a variable that I had previously created purpose for them. I'm just dropping that and creating a backup of the same data set. Right now, over here. Uh, <clears throat> so the purpose for which the loans are taken is mentioned in this particular data set. So if you have a look into this Jarman Bank data, so you would see that there is a large number of variables like new car, used car, furniture, radio, TV, education, retraining, etc. So there are these five, six variables which show the different purpose for which a loan was taken. Now what I see is I using keeping all these variables would not make much of a sense because these are these variables are showing the same side of a different thing so i mean different size of the same thing so what i'll do is instead of understanding whether a per person took a new car or not or a used car or not or a furniture or not or a radio tv or not or education loan or not or a retraining loan or not what we would do is we would club them together into one single variable called the purpose variable the purpose variable would have a new car and used car so either if a person bought a new car or a used car he took an automobile loan if he either bought a furniture or a radio tv he took a consumption or consumer loan if he took the loan for either retraining or education he took a education loan so this is basically what we would try to do so at the end of the day i just have one i can just have one single variable purpose and based on that i can just take out the variable values and then we will just uh, create a new variable out of that once that variable is created i do not require these six variables so what i'll do is i'll drop these six, six variables and create one single variable which will represent all these variables together so the total number of variables in my data set would reduce so this is another case where I am actually creating a derived variable and using this derived variable I am explaining the impact of the six variables and hence I do not require those six variables separately. Right? So that is another case where I would see that the total number of variable so uh, where I would see that uh, this variable yeah so just a moment yeah so over here what I would see is that this new variable called loan purpose will summarize all and in this way I can actually minimize the number of uh, variables in my data so I am not actually so whenever I'm creating a smaller number of a data a smaller number of variables there is always a purchase uh, there is always a reason behind doing that yes uh, Jay, there is a very important difference between uh, derived variables and dummy variables so dummy variables are variables which are always categorical in nature however derived variables need not necessarily be categorical in nature right now I can just use two numerical variables and create a third derived variable so a derived variable is nothing but it's a function of two primary variables. So you have variable one, you have variable two. Using the two variables, you create a variable three. So three is, say, suppose a ratio between A and B. So that is a derived variable. Whereas a dummy variable is y equals to one if default are equal to zero otherwise. Or bot, uh, say, y equals to, uh, say, new car equals to one if the customer bought a new car equal to zero otherwise so that's a dummy variable and a derived variable is a variable which is derived from two or more variables which could be a categorical variable or it could be a numeric variable as well but a dummy variable is always a character way i mean it's always a categorical variable and you do it and you create a dummy variable to convert a i mean a character variable into a numeric counterpart say you to give a numeric edge to this uh, character variable right good 
So basically what I'm trying to do over here is I'm trying to create the German bank data. So but observe over here, I'm creating this German bank data in the work library. Because in this variable or in this data step creation, there are two parts. First, I'll create the loan variable and then I will drop the six variables over there and with those and with both these two done I'll create my final data set so when I'm just creating the loan variable the, this is an intermediate step therefore this stat.jarman bank from when I'm creating jarman bank data from stat.jarman bank data I am actually creating this as an intermediate data set the final data set would be created after I have dropped the six variables, right? So, just let's see this. I'll just run this data set. So, what I'm saying is that if a new car is equal to one or used car equal to one, then the loan purpose is automobile. Else, if education is equal to one or retraining is equal to one, then loan purpose. Else, if any of these who do not hold then the only thing that is left is either radio tv or uh, say furniture for either of these cases the loan purpose is consumer products right so this german bank data that i have created in the work library You see that there is this loan purpose over here, right? So this variable has been created, but I would obviously want, I do not want these variables, new car, used car, furniture, radio, TV, education, retraining to be anymore in the data set. Also, I would always want this data set to have a particular order of variables where say OBS comes first, then comes loan purpose, then comes check account and so on. So over here, what we would do is we would go into the next step. In the next step, what I would do is I would retain, I would use a retain statement to retain the variable names in a specific order and at the same time drop the six variables. And when I'm doing this, I am actually creating again a new uh, temporary data set over here. So the temporary data set, why am I doing this? Because I have one more observation. I want to rewrite this variable OBS as cast ID or as customer ID. So there are a number of steps. So as long as I'm doing working with intermediate steps, I am not retaining back the intermediate data sets. I am just retaining back the final data set. So in the next step, what I do is I close this data set. We just have a look into the German bank data set once again. The loan purpose, OBS, check account, and this carries on. Now, in the next step, what I say is I'll not be keeping these additional variables because I've converted them into loan purpose as a single variable. And what I will do is I need to so I'll create a German bank data one. So you can see that the OBS is over here, loan purpose is here, and then all the information checking account duration history starts building on, right? Now, after that, what happens is, I want to rename this variable OBS into cast ID. So over here, what I'm introducing a new function, a new statement called the retain statement. Post that, I'm introducing the rename statement. In the rename statement, I'm renaming this variable OBS as cast id right so i'll just run this code and what you see is a new data set called jarman bank data underscore version 2 is actually created in the work library where is this German bank data version 2. So you have a variable called cast ID, you have a variable called loan purpose and so on. Now I need, I want to make further 
adjustment to this data. So what I would do is I would label, I want to label the data set as uh, label cast ID as customer ID. Hello. Sorry. So uh, what I want to do is I want to label this variable cast ID as customer ID. If you go to this Jarman Mang data set now, you would see that this vary and click on this variable, you would see that the name of the variable is cast ID and the label is customer ID. Right? <clears throat> so this is the way uh, we are actually so two things to be noted over here two small things one how to like so the first one is to identify that how to form an idea about the overall behavior I mean how to form a data set from a source data to a final data with intermediate transaction I mean with intermediate adjustments and how do we retain variables in a given order how do we rename and label so these are a few important functions which you might you which you have done previously in your modules but this is the way they actually are applied while you are working in the industry now this rename and the labeling could have been done simultaneously one single code but for demonstration purposes i have taken them in separate codes right so uh i will take a pause today i'll take a stop today and I'll open the forum for uh, the, like, I will open the forum for questions now. From tomorrow onwards, we start off with case 2B and we'll take it up forward. Right? Please uh, come out with your questions, guys. I am done from my end for the day. And tomorrow, we'll start off with case 2B. Thank you, Tadmay. Uh, Anurag, Bhupesh, Cedric, Hari, Jayant, Navneet, Poonam, Prabal, Sakshi, Sukriti, Sumit. Any queries, please unmute your mic. Please feel free to talk. Uh, other, not necessarily queries, if you would like to discuss something or what has happened so far or, or what, what is in store for you in the next four sessions, please feel free to unmute yourself. When you unmute yourself, just give an introduction about yourself to the audience. Who are you? What kind of a background you come from? And uh, then you can just put in uh, your uh, uh, thoughts and Tanma would be more than happy to help you guys out.